guys, welcome to our Ram Beyond channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of this all-star news that just came out because a lot of people are talking about the five starters for the Eastern and Western Conference teams in the NBA. Now, I want to start off by talking about the Eastern Conference because not that many people have issues with the selections. First, you have Giannis Antetokounmpo, then you got Jimmy Butler, DeMar DeRozan, Kyrie Irving, and then LeBron James. So pretty much everyone thought those were good selections. Now if you look at the Western Conference, this is where people have a lot of issues with this. First you have Steph Curry, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, James Harden, and then Kawhi Leonard. Now this is the thing, even with the Kawhi Leonard, I think people would assume that he should be there, and James Harden, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, and of course Steph Curry. You know, these are all great bowlers. But then there's the issue of Russell Westbrook not being there. You know, and for me personally, when I was talking about Russell Westbrook in the previous video, first of all, if you haven't seen that video, watch that video and you can hear what I said about him in that game against the Warriors. You know, the thing about Russell Westbrook is that he's really a one-man team. And I thought it was interesting because somebody was commenting on my video. I don't know if you want your name mentioned or not. So I'm just going to summarize what you were saying. But somebody was commenting on the video and saying, you know what? James Harden should be voted MVP because he contributes the most basically for his team. And they actually win games. And then compared to a Russell Westbrook, who's a one-man team, essentially, like I was saying, he's not winning those games, but he's getting the points. And some people say even that he's stat padding, meaning that he's just getting the points there so he can have better stats. Let me just say this because I told the person also I was going to talk about this, so obviously I'm talking about it. It's a good point. It's a valid point. It's something I noticed also. That's why I was saying those things about Russell Westbrook as far as him trying to lead the Thunder. But basically what all the players want in the NBA is to win a championship. Of course, we're going to acknowledge that some of the best all-time players did not win championships, yet they had the stats that were impressive. But if you ask those NBA athletes what they really wanted, it was an NBA championship. So if the fans are thinking that way, and I was kind of surprised because I thought the fans would see those triple doubles. And you know what? If that's the way it's going to go this season, then it's very possible that James Harden could win the MVP because people just think, you know what? Yes, you can contribute to your team, but are they winning most of those games? And how are you playing during those games? Is it really helping your team? And there's a lot of different ways you can look at that because most valuable player could be the best stats as far as the most points and assists and rebounds. It could also mean how much do you contribute to your own team so they can actually win games. You know, it's a combination of things. So again, we look at this lineup here for the starters. I know it's not the biggest deal. Does Russell Westbrook really care that he's not a starter for the All-Star game? He's a competitor, so it's possible. I don't think he looks at this and says, you know what, my season's not going good because I'm not a starter for the All-Star game. I do think it's kind of messed up because if you see some of the athletes here for the starter, like even a Steph Curry, I know from watching the Warriors, Steph Curry is an amazing leader. This season is really different than last season, of course, because you know what, they have Durant, they're sharing the ball more, and even Draymond Green is getting some points there. So to say that Steph Curry should be there and not... Uh, of Russell Westbrook, you know, the argument, like the person commenting on my video saying, you know what, James Harden should be the MVP because the Rockets are actually winning games and they're in a tough Western Conference, which is a valid point. Now, if you look at Steph Curry, now he hasn't had a season like he had last season so far. He's improving though. And also I mentioned the fact that he's a great two-way player because he's playing amazing defense and offense. He's been impressive and he continues to get better. But is that what people are looking at that makes him an all-star starter? See, this is the thing. When I compare Steph Curry to a Russell Westbrook, and I see all those triple doubles from Russell Westbrook, I'm one of the first people that says, are the Thunder going to do anything this year? Probably not. And that's because they don't have a team built for the playoffs. But what are the Warriors going to do? They're going to win games. They're not guaranteed to win a championship, but they're going to win games. And I'm rooting for them. And one of the leaders on the team is Steph Curry. So I know a lot of Russell Westbrook fans are probably angry to see like a Steph Curry, or even Kevin Durant, by the way. And Kevin Durant is having a very good season also. But Russell Westbrook is like a one-man team. And that's probably the issue that a lot of fans have with him. Is that he is that one-man team. And maybe he's not necessarily making his teammates better. And that's something I noticed. Although he's getting triple doubles and he's getting those assists. The team as a whole is not getting better just because of him. And it's not just his fault. Because if you look at the Thunder, that's a management issue. They're responsible for rebuilding that team without Durant. And I say rebuild, meaning you need someone to replace Durant, basically. You know, you don't need to rebuild a whole team. It's not that awful with the Oklahoma State Thunder. Although when they had Durant and Westbrook, they had a real opportunity various times to win and win a championship. And they didn't. You know, that's the way it goes in sports. But, you know, the way I look at the Oklahoma City Thunder, I think, of course, Westbrook is great for the team. But who's to say that Westbrook is going to stay with them? Because Durant left when he had an opportunity. And it's very possible that Westbrook does the same thing. I wouldn't blame him either. 
I think he would be amazing with the Los Angeles Lakers, even in a situation in New York. But I don't think he would want to go to New York for a lot of different reasons. I think maybe with the Lakers, he would be better. The situation with New York just seems really messed up with the players. I think Westbrook could be coached by Luke Walton. I don't think that would be an issue for him. Any other teams out there that he would be a good fit for? I wouldn't say Westbrook to the Cavaliers, that's for sure. I mean, Miami could be another option for him. There's a lot of places, even the Spurs. I mean, imagine that. Imagine where Westbrook would go after the Thunder. Because when these athletes renegotiate, obviously they're looking for a good contract. And, and they're looking to play for a team that's competitive. And I just don't think it's fair that Russell Westbrook has to do all of this. I mean, and look what happens with this All-Star game. Imagine if you were that athlete and you were doing all of that for your team, right? And then you have a situation where the fans are voting and also sports media, but they said that sports media had like 25% of the vote or whatever, not as much as the fans. So basically it's all about the fans and the sports media has their opinions too. And I think the vote said that the sports media thought that Russell Westbrook should have been a starter. Now, if you look at what the fans thought, similar to what the person commenting on my video was saying, maybe they're just not impressed with Russell Westbrook's triple doubles. I know as far as I've described Russell Westbrook's triple doubles, I just said it wouldn't help them win a championship. And that was obvious. As far as does it contribute to the team? Of course it does, but it's just not going to win them a championship. And those are the kind of things I guess the fans are looking at also. I am kind of surprised, but... I'm surprised in a good way. I think it's good that the fans look at the games this way because if you're watching a team and you see one person doing all the work, is it really that fun to watch? It's impressive because he can ball. And you want to root for guys like that in the NBA as far as just rooting for the game of basketball. As far as rooting for him, I root against him if he was going against the Warriors because I root for the Warriors. But if you look at Russell Westbrook, he is someone that you should appreciate for the game of basketball. And as far as him not being an all-star starter... I just look at it as kind of unfortunate. I don't have anything against the people who voted against him because you know what? This is about the fans and who they want to vote for. Even Zaza Pachulia was voted for. I mean, like, you have to think about this. Like I said, I think it's kind of unfortunate. You see the situation with him and Kevin Durant. I mean, some of these things, maybe even the All-Star game, him and Kevin Durant are going to talk and that could be resolved because honestly, those two guys should talk. You know, for a long time, they were playing for the same team and they seem to get along. And now they're on different teams and Kevin Durant went to the Warriors. They seem to have some kind of maybe a rivalry, but also some bitterness towards each other. Whatever's going on, it shouldn't really be like that because you know what? You're two athletes. You're successful. You're playing for teams that are competitive. Although the Thunder, I don't think they're going to win a championship. But two competitive teams. And yeah, you guys should be able to talk to each other. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And as far as, you know, what people think of Russell Westbrook with the triple doubles, you know, what he's doing is pretty impressive. But if this is the way people are thinking, it's very possible that people are going to be looking towards James Harden, who's on the Rockets, who is also impressive of himself. Because if you watch James Harden ball, I mean, the guy can play. He can really play. You know, on another team, not the Rockets, but on another team, he could possibly be one of the leaders for a championship team. And that's the thing with the NBA. It's all about where your team is playing, how they're built, you know, what kind of teammates you have. And if Russell Westbrook was on a different team, the same situation. Both of those guys are really playing great basketball this season, and I think both have an opportunity to win MVP. Now, also, I would like to say this. As far as my personal opinion, right now with the triple doubles, I would say Russell Westbrook. But again, with the MVP, if you're looking at who's helping the teams win, obviously the Oklahoma City Thunder are not winning as many games as the Rockets right now, and what it looks like to me is that Russell Westbrook has way too much pressure on him. And he seems like a decent kind of guy. I just want to say that because when he talks to the media and the media tries to ask him stuff about Durant or anything else, I think he handles the sports media pretty well and also the way he plays the game. And yeah, I did say that he flopped against the Warriors, but I'm looking at a situation where a pick was set. You know, he kind of just reacted. That happens a lot. It's not just him. So I wasn't just saying that to say something about Russell Westbrook. But the more I see of him, and if you watch any of the videos from him when he practices and everything, you know, even with his trainers, he appreciates the game. And I don't know how you root against someone like that, unless you're rooting for a team that's going up against him. But I'm just saying as a person in the NBA, the situation is the same thing with LeBron James. You know, I root against him because the Warriors are going against him. And I like to make fun of the fact that he flaps sometimes or complains. But as far as people in the NBA, he's one of the better guys in the NBA. He's a really great guy for the game of basketball. So to say anything about him, you know, negative, if you weren't rooting against him in a situation with your team going up against the Cavaliers, or if he's trying to say that he's like Jordan or something, then we can start talking about that. But as far as a person in the NBA, guys like Steph Curry, LeBron James, Klay Thompson, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and even some of these other all-stars that you see here, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, there's a lot of great guys in the NBA, 
They're all competing. And I think the All-Star game is going to be a lot of fun because it always is. I just thought the situation with Russell Westbrook was kind of messed up because I think that he's worked his way to at least getting a starting position for the All-Star team. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to be talking about the fact that Kevin Durant is a starter and he's not. And I'm sure people are going to ask Westbrook and Durant what they think about that. And there's going to be more drama there, more conversation about both of those guys and how they compete against each other. But just maybe that rivalry could be friendly competition and not so much where it's bitter and they can't talk to each other. But as far as the Warriors go, you know, as I've said in these videos, I've been watching the Warriors. I noticed the next game the Warriors have is against the Rockets. Now, this is interesting because the Rockets beat the Warriors in overtime in their last matchup. Now we're talking about a Warriors team that seems to have their act together. But also you see that Rockets team led by James Harden. It's going to be good basketball. Because when you see James Harden in a game like this, you know he's going to be ready. I don't know how much of you guys have seen of James Harden, but this guy can ball. And one of his moves, it's really interesting because he's a point guard, but he's built. And he also has the coordination to step back, take his shots from the perimeter. And he has a pretty decent perimeter shot. And this is why he's a candidate for MVP, because he could do a lot of different things. I thought it was also interesting about him is that he actually is one of the leaders for the Rockets. Not just about the points and assists and everything else. By the way he plays, it seems like he's leading that team by example. When you have someone like that on your team, you can just play the game that you have to play, and people are going to follow just based on what you're doing. And I think he's one of those guys in the NBA that really is an example of what the NBA is all about. You know, you need a lot of guys like this on a team to win a championship. And that's why I'm saying there's not enough guys like that on the Rockets for them to win the championship. But there's other teams out there, including the Warriors. And even though I don't like the Cavaliers, they won the championship for a reason because they had LeBron James and other guys that can help out, including Kyrie Irving. When you have guys like that, you can win a championship. Again, I don't like the Cavaliers, but they had a team to win the championship. It wasn't an accident. Although, LeBron James and Tyrone Lue complained about Draymond Green, and that was a series changer, whatever. But the thing about James Harden that I think is most impressive, out of all his moves, you have to watch one of his moves where he puts like a step forward. He puts people on skates, as they say. He'll put one foot forward and then step back and take his shot. And he completely fakes out a lot of the other players out there. So to play defense against a James Harden, that's going to be a task. That's going to be a task for Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and even guys like Kevin Durant. This is going to be a good game. But I think the Warriors can do it this time because I'm rooting for the Warriors. So obviously I would like to see them play a better game than they did the last time they went up against the Rockets. But the situation here with the Warriors, that transition offense, it runs a lot based on their defense. So if the defense is going good, obviously they can transition into that offense and they use a lot of speed to do that. So I think the Warriors have that advantage also. But the Rockets and James Harden, it's going to be good. And I think James Harden, no offense to him, but in this game... <laughs> We got to get you not scoring so many points. And we also have to get you out of the paint because you know what? This guy can do a lot. I mean, honestly, someone like this who has a lot of strong points to this game. You know, if you think about it from the Warriors point of view, if they can just play some pretty decent defense against him. And I'm not saying you're going to stop him completely because as they say with other players in the NBA, some guys you just can't stop completely. You know, James Harden an example of that. Russell Westbrook is. And the way Steve Kerr talks about these situations, he's like, those guys are going to get their points. But we're going to get our points also. And if we could just make the ball go into that person's hand all the time, meaning if it's just one guy, then they're doing okay. And the reason why is because one man is not going to win the game. Usually. There were situations such as Michael Jordan, who was single-handedly winning games for even the Bulls. But of course, other guys on the team had to contribute also. But basically what Steve Kerr is saying is that those guys are going to get their shots. They're going to get their points. But if you could just control that situation where not everyone else is getting the rhythm because of that one person, then your defense is working. And I think that's a valid point because nobody expects the Warriors to completely stop James Harden. But again, as far as the MVP discussion... I can get why people are talking about James Harden, or Russell Westbrook, or even the Kevin Durant. But honestly, this season, right now, it is about James Harden and Russell Westbrook. I think overall, as teams go, I think obviously in the Western Conference, people are looking at the Warriors. And in the Eastern Conference, no surprise, people are looking at the Cavaliers. But I just want to say one thing about the Western Conference. Some people are even talking about the Spurs. It's no offense to the Spurs, but in the Western Conference, a lot of times when people are talking about the Warriors, the Clippers, the Spurs, some people are talking about the Blazers. You could talk about the Thunder or even the Rockets. 
But really, the Western Conference right now, again, it's no offense to any other team. It is about the Warriors. And when the Warriors go up against teams like the Clippers in the playoffs, they show up. And in that situation where the Warriors went up against the Thunder last season, and the Thunder had a 3-1 lead in the series, that was really the time for the Thunder to win the series. Now they didn't, and look what happened. The Warriors got to the finals. The whole idea that the Western Conference is tougher than the Eastern Conference is valid because if we look at the Western Conference and the competition there, I'm not saying another team couldn't get to the finals. It's just that if you watch this Warriors team, there's a lot going on here. And it's not just about the three-pointers, obviously, because the three-pointers haven't been the main topic for this team this season. What it's been about is that this team wants to share the ball, and they don't have egos that cause competition within the team that actually doesn't allow them to win these games and interferes with them developing into a great team. And what's happening is that we're seeing a great team evolve and now you have another guy on the team that can play and basically has a team first mentality because what it seems like is that Kevin Durant always wanted to be on a team that played as a team. And that's no offense to Russell Westbrook. Some people hear that and they say, you know what, you're saying that, that he went to the Warriors and he wants to have a team around him, but what was Westbrook? See, the problem is with certain teams is that you have egos that collide. When Russell Westbrook would try to take over a game, which happens a lot, even this season, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win the game. And again, this is what people had an issue with, with voting for Russell Westbrook as even an all-star starter or even possibly the MVP because they're looking at James Harden where the team is actually winning with the Rockets. And even if you look at the Warriors, Durant is part of a team that's winning. And Kevin Durant understands that the Warriors have a team first mentality based on their coach and also the players who really like that coach. Because when you like your coach, you're going to take on their persona and you're going to compete the way your coach wants you to compete. You're not just going to go out there and be reckless about it. And I think a good example of this is when the Warriors had an opportunity to close out that game against the Grizzlies and you had Kevin Durant at the very end of the game take a shot when he wanted to lead the offense, but Steph Curry had the ball. So Steph just gave him the ball. But that's the kind of person Steph is. He didn't want to say no to him or whatever. But Draymond Green was the one to yell at Durant about it because, again, this team is a team. And if Draymond Green knows the offense that well, which he does, to run a play that wasn't what Durant was doing, of course he's going to be annoyed by that. And I'm sure he was annoyed with the situation as a whole for the fact that it really prevented them from winning the game because towards the end of the game, you know, the Grizzlies were just getting baskets and defense wasn't that impressive either. So Draymond Green talked about that already. So have the other Warriors. The point is, is that when a team is all on the same page, which the Warriors are, there is constructive criticism. You know, you can actually go up to your teammate and say, hey, this should be different. Because again, basketball is a team sport. And it's not just about one person. I think this is one of the things that goes against Russell Westbrook. Is that you have one person doing all the work for the Thunder. And even in the situation with Kevin Durant with the Thunder. You had two guys doing all the work. And look what happened. They didn't win the championship. And now the Thunder are not in the best position. Because right now you need to get another person. That could do somewhat of what Durant could do for your team. Although Durant is a unique player. And it's not so easy to get someone like that on your team. Because if it was... Everyone would have a Kevin Durant on their team, and they don't. So I think the Warriors are in a unique situation themselves. They have some very good players in this team. You know, even the mentioned Zaza Pachulia, a lot of people like him. He's a fan favorite because look how he was against Westbrook, and he sets that pick. By the way, what I thought was funny about that pick against Westbrook is that when you look at Iguodala, Iguodala always has that expression on his face like, by the whistle. He's like looking at the referees. He's like, why'd you stop the game? I think that's his move. He always shrugs his shoulders and then shakes his head like, what's going on here? Like, what are you guys doing? That's his move. If you ever watch Iguodala, you have to watch out for that. It's hilarious to me. Maybe it's because I'm a Warriors fan and I laugh about those things, but he's really funny to me. But as far as the team as a whole, you know, you have Iguodala. Of course, you have Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Kevin Durant. Again, we mentioned Zaza Pachulia. I mean, the Warriors are a very good team. And they have a team-first mentality, as I've said numerous times in this video, because this team is playing for themselves. They don't care about the sports media. They don't care about the people criticizing them. They're really talking about winning a championship. And I thought it was really funny that people were making excuses for the Cavaliers, saying they really didn't care about that game against the Warriors, when the Warriors themselves don't seem to care all that much about this regular season being everything. Because it's not. 
It's about the championship that you could win if you get to the finals and win that series. So if we look at the Warriors compared to last season, that Warriors team was really pressing for breaking a record. And also they thought they can go on and win the championship, of course, because the Bulls, who won one less game than the Warriors, because that was a previous record for the all-time wins, which was 72 regular season wins as the all-time record, they went on to win an NBA championship, and that's because they were able to do it. And what it seems like is that the Warriors got themselves in a situation where there was probably too much hype and focus focus on that regular season and that was last season so now you have these games with the Warriors this season if you hear the players talk basically what they're talking about is getting better as a team and that happens especially when you have a new player that is capable of what Kevin Durant is which doesn't happen all the time like I was talking about before. So I think the Warriors are in a good position to win a championship. Again, I don't guarantee anything in the NBA because with these teams, anything can happen. But those two teams, the Warriors and the Cavaliers, are favorites for the finals for a reason. And that's because they pretty much control both conferences. And I think the Warriors, if they can get to the finals with the home advantage, they're going to be tough. Because this is not the same team as last season. And some people might say the changes, whether it's about Durant or even the defense of the Warriors, you know, whether it's more impressive than last season, whatever, this team is going to be competitive. And I think it's going to be a lot better for them. Even if you look at that series against the Thunder last year, down 3-1 in a series, and then you had to come back three straight games, that takes a lot out of a team. They're going to go into these playoffs a lot better. They're going to be ready. They're going to be a lot more focused on playing as a team. So you have Thompson and Curry and Durant, Draymond Green, Iguodala. You know, you have these guys all focused on playing as a team. And then also you're going to see what Steve Kerr is about. Because Steve Kerr, I'm sure, is not too interested in talking about what he's ready to do in the finals. Because that's something for the Warriors to know about, not anyone else. I also think that the Warriors are going to be much more prepared for a lot of what they're going to face in these playoffs. Because that first year when they won the championship, I felt they went into the regular season with a lot of confidence. But they also now know, which a lot of people say this also, they know the feeling of losing. And losing in a finals. And a lot of athletes, you know what they say about that? You don't forget it. Because when you get a chance to go back there, especially to the finals, you're going to be ready and you're going to know what you're going to have to face when you go up against a team like the Cavaliers or anyone else if it's an NBA Finals. But anyways, I would like to know what you guys think about all of this. Let me know in the comments what you think about that situation with Russell Westbrook, James Harden on the All-Star team, or even some of the other players on the All-Star team. And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.